Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And today, we've got a problem. Today wasn't going to be a filming day. This is Ben's ute. Ben's my lad. And it went for a waff. And it failed. And it failed because of the brakes. And it turns out there's a big problem with the left-hand rear brake. When it's on the brake machine, very, very little output compared to the right hand side. Here my mate. There's also a bit of an issue with the front left hand brake as well. Uh, that's down on efficiency too. Now the wheel's off, the actual disc and the hub spins really freely. So there's no binding going on. You'd expect to find binding if the sliders were seized. Hmm. Okay, this could be a piston problem. Alright, let's get the caliper taken off. It does smell like it's been getting pretty hot, so let's just see what's going on. And the disc is sort of a reddy brown colour, which again indicates it's been getting really hot. So there's been some binding going on. But look, copper paste. That was me. Right. Hmm, okay, well the sliders feel pretty good. Let's try this one. Yep, see the slider's good? Nice and smooth. And that one there. And that's pretty good too. It's a bit dry on lubricant, but it is moving fine. So, I think the problem is with the piston. So at the moment the piston is pretty much all the way in and the easiest way to get that piston out is to pump the brake pedal actually. Um, we can do that because the uh, the rear circuit's clamped off at the moment anyway so it won't cause any harm to the rear system. What we don't want is the piston to pop all the way out then we're going to lose loads and loads of fluid but we can certainly get it a fair way out and we can take a look and see how bad it is. Because at the moment, because it's all the way in, we can't see the surface uh, of that piston. And we can't tell how corroded it is. Okay, so I'm going to get a, uh, a zip tie, I think. Hold this up in place. And then uh, I'll start pumping the brake pedal. And you can tell me when to stop. Okay, so I've put the piston quite a long way out actually, and we've got a split just round here. Look, in the uh, in the gator, and we can see through to the piston. It's pretty badly corroded. We now just flick that seal, that gator, that dust seal. This is only a dust seal, by the way. The hydraulic seal is further back. But if we flick that out of the groove, all the way around. Then we push it back down the piston. 
it doesn't matter too much if we have it because it's already naked we can start to see a con the condition of the actual piston all the way around is really badly corroded and this piston the pads are pretty good so the piston spends most of its time when the pads are good all the way in so this area here would have been in contact um, with the, the casting itself and jamming against the casting uh, and that's going to affect piston retraction it's going to if it's semi seized it's going to affect how much force is transferred via the piston the clamping effect onto the brake pads so I'm going to continue to pump this out just a bit further maybe another 10 mil and then we're going to take the caliper off I'm going to strip it down on the bench and we're going to clean that piston up and see if we can reuse the piston. We're really going to need a new seal kit regardless because that gate is damaged. But let's see if we can clean the piston and save the piston. It's unlikely, but we'll give it a go. Okay, we've got fluid leakage now, which means the piston's pretty much all the way out. So I'm just going to clamp off that flexi pipe using my infamous mole grips and a couple of sockets. That's all I've ever used. There we go, look. Uh, we're going to refit the caliper onto the slider just so we can crack off the, the banjo bolt, which is a 12. Okay. And it's time for some eye protection now as well because we've got brake fluid flying around. Tight. Excellent. Right, so caliper's off the vehicle now and we can actually pull the piston straight out. It's pretty uh, completely free on there. And don't forget, corrosion doesn't just have to happen on the piston, it can happen inside the bore as well. Now, I'm not entirely sure. Get my screw out of here, look. I'm not entirely sure how this seal is held into place. Sometimes there's metal rings, sometimes there's no metal rings. Uh, this one feels like it's just. Uh, there's a metal ring, look. Just a little circlet to retain it. Pin that out. There we go. It's a much bigger air compressor than it should be, isn't it? Right. Okay. So that's the dust seal now removed. And there's a few of my videos that cover this kind of stuff already. And that dust seal has failed. It's allowed water and crap to get in and caused corrosion. Now inside here, if you can see that or not, I'm not sure if you can. Just inside there, there you go, look, is the main seal. That's the hydraulic seal. That's what we call the square section seal. I'm going to just flick that out now. Now that hasn't failed. Just get a little scribe going for that. That hasn't failed because we had no leakage. But we still need to take it out so we can don't damage it when we clean, clean the whole thing. There we go. Right. Now we're going to have to order a new seal kit anyway, actually, because we've, the dust seal's already screwed. So that's the square section seal. And its job isn't just to create a seal between the piston and the body of the caliper. Its job is also piston retraction. And I explain a lot of that in some of my other videos. We won't worry about that today. Okay, so we've got inside there to clean up. We've got the piston to clean up. Hopefully the piston is going to be good enough to reuse. Not sure yet. And we're going to need a new seal kit. Right, bit of work to do. So the first stage of trying to clean up a piston, 
after you've given it a wipe down with a cloth and got rid of all the brake fluid so you can see what you're doing. I'm just going to give it a quick whiz round with a wire brush and that should remove a lot of the discoloration. And then we can see if there's any actual pitting in the surface. Now, um, if this isn't enough, which it probably won't be, but it gets rid of a lot of the uh, contaminants so you don't uh, block up your sandpaper quite so quickly. I'll grab a bit of wet and dry, which is really, really fine, that you tend to use for um, bodywork repairs and stuff, for flooding off paint. And uh, we'll give it a quick once over with that and see if that's going to smooth the whole thing out. Now this is a process that I've covered before on a Nissan Patrol front calipers and a Honda dirt bike and the Yamaha Viking that we did with all the brakes on that as well. So this is, a lot of this video is common but this is specific to the Ford Courier, uh, especially the rear brake side of it. Okay, so now once that's done you can just run it over your finger I know it's not ideal with gloves on, but you can still sort of feel. And you're just feeling for any kind of imperfections, looking for any, any corrosion where it's gone into, it's pitted into the surface of the piston. And that actually feels pretty good. So I'm going to go and grab some wet and dry, and we're going to give it one final clean up, and then we can reuse this piston once it has another clean. Um, on the inside here, in this void area, it really doesn't matter about the condition in there too much. Um, you know, it's not in contact with anything. Obviously, if it was really, really badly corroded and it, it was causing a structural issue, then sure, you'd have to replace it. But, you know, a bit of rust, a bit of surface rust, totally irrelevant, doesn't matter. Um, something else to bear in mind is if the caliper has been overheated tremendously, that's going to affect your seals, it's going to damage the rubber seals, and it could actually distort the piston. So the piston may not be round anymore, and that could be another reason why it's jamming in the casting. So a new piston would fix that. And you could take you could take measurements. You know, you can get your micrometer or your vernier calipers, and measure across here, and then measure across there, and take a number of readings and make sure it's the same all the way around. Um, obviously, the, the maximum deviation is going to be on the open end, which is probably across here. So you should be getting the same readings all the way around. And if you get any kind of variance on that, then I would suggest that you change the piston as well, if there's signs of it being overheated. If it's just corrosion, then you, there wouldn't be any need to do that. Okay, <clears throat> so we don't need to clean or affect the whole piston with the wet and dry paper. It really is just this last... Where's my pointy stick? Here we go, look. It really is just from you know around this area here. Again, anything from this edge down, this is where the, the internal part of the dust seal sits and over here. Any corrosion on there or pitting isn't really that relevant. The contact surface is, is this area of the piston here, obviously all the way around, and you can see it's been binding up, there's drag marks across that surface. So we get the wet and dry now, and it's important we do it across the piston, not along the piston. And just See there, look, it's taking it's completely removed all that discoloration. And we'll do that all the way around, and then we'll give it another final inspection. And if there's any kind of pitting, and we'll be able to see it really easily after we've done this, uh, then we can decide whether or not the pistons, the pitting's, you know, insignificant, and we can just continue to use the piston. Or it needs to replace. Now these brakes have overheated considerably uh, in the past, they've been binding, so I will do that, uh, that measurement check as well after we've done this. Now uh, this, this stuff is, is wet and dry and it's P800 grit. It's really, really fine. You don't want to be using normal sort of sandpaper on here because it would just cause lots of score marks and stuff. And that will cause a bit of a problem. There is a bit of pitting down the bottom here as well, so I might just give that a just a quick once over as I'm going around. Now a lot of garages wouldn't bother to to do this kind of cleaning up process. They would often just put in new pistons and new seal kits. In fact, in all honesty, a lot of garages these days would just buy a reconditioned caliper. They wouldn't even 
you know, mess around doing this kind of work, especially main franchise dealers. This isn't something that they would normally get involved with. They'd rather just buy a, buy and fit a whole new unit, which is expensive, you know. If all you need is a new seal kit and a bit of elbow grease, why on earth would you spend all that money? Really? Go on holiday instead, you know, go on an adventure somewhere rather than spend it on the car. Okay, well, this is looking really good. So I'm just going around now inspecting the surface of that piston after we've given it a clean up. And uh, actually, I'm really happy with that. Really, really happy with that. Surprised as well, actually. And it, it just goes to show how such minor corrosion and contamination can cause problems with your brake. There we go. Cool, okay, really happy with that. We can definitely, definitely reuse that. There's, uh, there's no real problems at all on there. So we'll grab a rag and we'll just give it a quick, a quick wipe off. Ah, one last thing actually, I said I was gonna measure it, didn't I? So we'll get the verniers and it's the, it's the open end where I think we're gonna get most distortion. So we'll just take a measurement across there. Uh, what have we got? 53.85. Let's just spin it round. Take another one. 53.85. 53.85. So it's looking pretty good. I don't think the piston's got distorted at all, so. Yeah, cool. Quite happy with that. That's a pass. Good job. <clears throat> right, I'm back. Hi. Um, so, piston, good, absolutely really good actually, very surprised about that. Seal kit or seals on the front caliper, well the dust seal had a huge hole in it, so we need a new seal kit, you can't just buy a dust seal, you've got to buy that, but you know, dust seal, the main seal and the clip, you should get. Uh, sliders are all good, obviously going to get re-greased, uh, I still need to clean out the inside of the, where the piston sits in the caliper body, but there's no need to film that, I think you know how to clean stuff out. Plenty of other videos that I've done showing that anyway, so I'll do that and then I've got to scoot out and go and find some parts. Okay, here goes. Right, I'm back. Um, seal kits have finally turned up for the uh, front calipers on the little um, Ford Courier Ute. So what we need to do now basically is rebuild this caliper using the new seal kit. Now these seal kits well, they weren't too badly priced, they are about 40, 44 dollars, 45 bucks each um, from Repco in New Zealand. Now, when you look at what you really get, 44 dollars is quite a lot of money. We've got a new main seal, we've got a new dust seal, and it's the dust seal that we really needed, that was the critical part. And then we've got some, um, well, rather weird looking gators which don't really bear any relevance to the style that's on this caliper. So I'm hoping that these are the right seals. So before we start, <clears throat> I'm going to grab the old ones that came out and we're going to do a comparison because we really don't want to be building this caliper up with the wrong kind of seals in it. Now I did take the old seals to Repco and I left them with them so that they could also match them up. So let's take a look and see what it's like. Okay, so these are the old seals, dust seal, the one with the, with the rip in it, and this is the main seal. Now also, the dust seal was retained by this steel clip. And normally, when you order a new kit, you'd get one of these. No steel clip, but hey, this one is reusable, so it's not the end of the world. But what's really important is that this seal is exactly the same size. <clears throat> so we get the piston and slide that over the piston. It's pretty much the same diameter. If we get that one, 
it's larger by a considerable amount. Okay, so one possible discrepancy. Um, dust seal. Well, hmm. ah, it's different. It's different. You see here, look, <clears throat> this dust seal is designed to work without a clip. So it sits into a recess in the caliper body. In there. And it's, it's held into place, once the piston's pushed in, the piston itself holds that lip in the groove. Whereas this one is quite different. This one, this little um, metal clip sits around there, obviously under compression, and pushes that into the groove. And if you look here, you'll see how wide that is, and that's the bit that sits in the groove inside the inside the caliper body, which is that groove there. Whereas if you look on this seal, see how much narrower that is? It's about half the width, which means this dust seal is going to be floating around. I think this is the wrong seal kit. And if we look further, we've got these things. Now these essentially are uh, to do with the sliders. Now we've got two the same and we've got two caps. Now that would indicate the cap um, represents a sealed end like that. But on this end of the caliper we don't have that. We have a bolt that goes all the way through. Again quite different. So I think Repco have made a mistake with these which means I'm not going to be able to rebuild the caliper today after all. So it's a bit of a problem. Um, upon the first glance in the store, when I picked these kits up, um, yes, I already had the old seals with me in the box and I'd asked them to double check them. But everything was packaged up. I didn't really want to open the packaging and it was quite hard to see inside. Okay, an excuse maybe. Obviously I was in a rush. Um, but, now that we're in the workshop and we've given it um, fair consideration, I believe that the kit is incorrect. Sure, the main seal is similar, very similar, but it's bound to be. They're all, they're all similar. They're all about the sort of same. They all work the same way. The dust seal is less similar. It's not going to work. So I'm going to give them a call and tell them that they've made a mistake and they need to have another go trying to find me the correct seal kits because I need to get this vehicle back together we need it back on the road okay we have an update uh, on two separate occasions now I have been sent the wrong seal kits so I'm gonna to have to order them through Ford Mazda uh, and they are currently sat on a shelf in Japan and they're gonna take two weeks to get here so I'll put the calipers back together with only the old main seals in back on the vehicle driving it around um, not a great idea without dust seals, but we need the vehicle back on the road. We can't have it off the road for three weeks. It's crazy. Um, so that's the end of this video. This is a disassembly and inspection video, and I'll do a new video which goes through fitting the new seal kits and installation back on the vehicle with a quick bleed up. So I hope you found this video helpful, and do watch this space, because in about two weeks' time, there will be the, the finale, the second half of this job um, being posted onto YouTube. Okay, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down the bottom. Uh, and if you want to subscribe, you know, why not subscribe? Do it. Subscribe to the channel and that way you'll get free notifications uh, as to when any new videos get uploaded, which will obviously include the, the rebuild of these calipers on this Ford Courier Ute. Okay, cheers. Over and out. Thank you.